I'm glad the brother brought out the thing of speaking in tongues because most people do it and just follow, follow along with it without knowing the history of it. There's no place in the Bible where Christ and the disciples started speaking some gibberish that no one was understanding. Nowhere. Falling out and spitting and all that. Nowhere in the Bible. And that's the second chapter, the speaking of tongues was on the day of Pentecost where Jews came from amongst from all the different places in the earth and they understood different languages in order for them to take the gospel back to their respective countries Peter had to understand their language in a different language so when he spoke the gospel it came out in the language of their country <coughs> so that they can take it back to their country no way to do it show you you're speaking something that you don't even know what you're saying. They come from the ancient Roman uh, uh, worshiping of Bacchus. Ancient Rome. They had a ritual every Sunday where the women would, would just get very emotional and let a demon enter them and they start taking off their clothes and dancing and start saying things and chanting and channeling because they had a deep demonic uh, uh, possession within them. That's where it came from, the god of Bacchus in ancient Rome. In the early 1900s, before we started doing it in the Baptist church, down south you had a ritual where they had snakes and speaking and channeling in the church. And it was like sorcery and voodoo. Now they took the snakes out and kept the speaking of the tongue within the church. The same channeling of ancient Bacchus. B-A-C-C-H-U-S What do you say? So are you talking? Are you willing to, are you ready to receive? Hey sister. Sister. Hey sister, if you're not gonna conversate, sister, if you're not gonna conversate, then I'll speak over you. Now I'm willing to conversate with you. Now, do you know that in Corinthians, Paul said that if you speak in an unknown tongue, you have to have an interpreter? All right, let's see. Let's see. Go to 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians, I'm saying, now, oh, now you won't run. Now to, run it, now to bring it out the Bible, you don't want no answers. Well, let me read it. How you want to tell me what Paul says that we're about to read it? So, just, okay, will you be quiet and I'll be quiet. Let's Paul speak. Read 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he does so the gifts, the greatest gift is to be able to prophesy what we're doing right here. Read. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not upon unto men. So if you're speaking in an unknown tongue, you're not speaking to men. Read. But unto God. But unto God. But I'm going to show you how you're supposed to do it according to Paul. But listen, we didn't say you were wrong, but you're missing something. Are you willing to receive something? Okay, all right, let, let's finish reading now. Read. For no man understand, understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. It says, because no man understand you, howbeit you speaketh mysteries. Read. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. So, but if you prophesy, we're speaking to people to edify so they can understand what God is saying. Read. And, and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That means if you are speaking in an unknown tongue, you're not teaching no one else anything. You're edifying your own self. Read. Really? But he that prophesies edifies the church. So if you're, if you're not edifying the church, Paul is going to tell you what you're supposed to do when the spirit of unknown tongue come on you. What are you supposed to do? Read. I would that ye all 
All speak. Hey, sis, when the Bible is being read, you should listen. You can't talk and listen to the Bible. That's the problem. That's what's wrong in these churches. Y'all doing all this and ain't nobody reading. Read it again. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues. So they try to make, it, make you seem like you're not spiritual if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues. When really, edifying and making sure the church understands God is a greater gift than speaking in another language. Read Except he interpret that the church may Tony, and, and hold on. Except he what? Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. That means unless someone is there and know the language that's coming out of you, you're not supposed to be speaking it in a church. Paul is telling you. Because the church is not being edified. God can be telling this person that a bomb is about to go off. And if an interpreter is not interpreting it, the people are not being warned. That's what the brother is bringing out. So if you want to speak to God in a different tongue, Paul is going to tell you, go home with that. Go home. It's going to show you that. Read. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking... I'm going to show you that Paul say do that in your own house. You're not supposed to do that in public. I'm going to show you. Read. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Paul says, if I came to you speaking to t in tongues, how can I profit you? Read. Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. So he needed what? Revelation? Read those things that we have to speak to the church with. Read, read that part again. Now brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Say, listen, I'm not going to profit you nothing. I'm speaking in a language you don't understand. Read. Except I shall speak to you either by revelation. Said, I'm going to speak to you by revelation. Read. Or by knowledge. By knowledge, things I know that the Lord is telling me, read. Or by prophesying. Or by prophesying out of the Bible, read. Or by doctrine. Or by doctrine, the doctrine Christ brought. Now, if somebody's speaking in a gibberish you don't understand, how can you be edified? Read. And even, and even things without life-giving sound. Go ahead. With a pipe or harp, except, except they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what, what is piped or harp? How can it be known what's being said if no one is saying, no one is interpreting what's coming out of your mouth? Read. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Who's going to prepare themselves to the battle if no one knows what you're saying? Read. So likewise he accept ye other by the tongue words, easy to under uh, understand. So now, you should be in the church uttering things that's easy for other people to understand you, according to Paul. Read. How shall, it, how shall it be known what is spoken? How do we know what you're talking about? So y'all want to read that you're talking to God, but you want to stop instead of reading the whole chapter. Read. After, after Paul talks. Read. For ye shall speak into the air. You shall speak into the air. That means you're not speaking to nobody. So you're not benefiting no one but yourself. And I'm going to tell you, the majority of people in the church to be doing that, be straight faking. They be straight faking. They doing it because they see other people do it. Read on. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Go ahead. Therefore, if I know, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. That means if you don't understand the language, if I'm speaking to you in a different language, that means I'm a barbarian to you because you don't understand me. Read. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So how can we both build in the spirit of Christ when we're not understanding each other? And what's going on in these churches? A bunch of people speaking all these things at the same time. And God says he's not the author of confusion. And none of them understand what they're saying. A matter of fact, after they're finished, you go back to him and say, Okay, God was speaking to you. What did he say? If you don't even know what he's saying, how is it? And you don't know if a devil jumped in you. You don't know. Read. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. How, would you, how, how much you excel? See, and that's the spirit. As you can see, that's the spirit right there. That is the spirit. Because when the Bible is being read, the spirit cannot control itself. You want to take one part of the scripture because you have a demon that's holding you. You don't even want to get the word for it to come out. Now, listen, listen. 
Listen, I'm reading the Bible. How should I watch what we're reading? I'm reading the Bible. Read. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. The Lord says we should seek to, to excel with the edifying of the church. That means it's my job to make sure if I'm teaching the Bible that people understand. So if somebody's jumping around saying some stuff you don't know, how is that making the people uh, understand the book? That's what Paul is saying here. Read. Wherefore, wherefore let him that, that speaketh in an unknown tongue. So that, <laughs> here it is now, sister, listen. If you're speaking in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret. Make sure you have an interpreter. So uh, do they have interpreters in the church? I went to the churches, I know. Read. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but in my understanding is unfruitful. That means my understanding is unfruitful. If I don't understand what God being be, be, what, what God is telling me, how does it benefit my spirit? How do I know it's not a demon? If you don't know what's being said. Read. Really? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. Go ahead. I will sing with the spirit, I will sing with the understanding also. Go ahead. Else, else when thou shalt bless, bless with the spirit. How shall, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen Go ahead. at the giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what, what thou sayest? So how can someone say amen if they don't know what you say? Ain't nobody, people will be looking at you like, what you're saying? How can I know whether or not that's coming from God? Read. For thou verily givest thanks well. But the other is not edified. Go down to the point of interpreting. You first attack. Read. Where? I don't see it. Which one? Round 28. Let's go, let's go right here. Hold on. Right here. Start, start the 26th verse. This is the rule for anyone that's speaking in tongues in the church. 1 Corinthians 14 and 26, read it. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, have a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath the rep let it be by two. Let it be by two. That means you have to have two people there as a witness that you're speaking a language that someone in the church understands. Read. Let it be by two or, or at the most by three. Go ahead. And that by, by course, let one interpret. And let one do what? Let one interpret. That means if you got an interpreter, that person is actually saying something or saying a language that is spoken in the earth. That means someone has to interpret to the people what's being said. Or what? But if there is no interpreter... But if there's no interpreter in the church, sister, read. Let him keep silence. Let him do what? Let him keep silence in the church. Be quiet. That's what Paul is saying. If you don't have an interpreter, don't say nothing. Read. And let him speak to himself and not to the Most High. Go by yourself with that. That's what Paul is saying. Read. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If, if anything be revealed to another, that sitteth by, that the first hold his peace. Now let's make it clear. According to the Bible, because Paul was writing to the churches, if someone is speaking in, in an unknown tongue, and don't have an interpreter, what is the order according to God? What they have to do? They have to be quiet. Silence means, sister, silence means what you was doing a couple of seconds ago. Listen, I'm going to let you talk, but you don't, you're trying to, out, uh, you're trying to go around this scripture. I'm asking you, according to the Bible, did Paul just say that if you don't have an interpreter, be silent? Yes. Is that a yes or no? Okay. So if they're doing this in the church without an interpreter, are they following the Bible? Listen, I'm just asking you a question. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to ask you. Maybe, maybe I asked a question in the wrong manner. Let me ask it this way. If they are speaking in tongues in the church and don't have an interpreter, are they following the Bible, yes or no? Hey, sis, sis, I'm just asking you yes or no. No. Hey, sis, sis, no. The Lord says, let your yea be yea, and let your nay 
be made. That's the problem. People are making up their own rules in the church. You are not supposed to speak in tongue without an interpreter. And at that time, what like, Paul had heard, heard that because everybody wanted to speak in tongues. So this is what Paul explained in, in the letter that it was more better to prophesy and things like that. Then when the time he goes out, now that the church he says, I should now. We're still sticking around the point. The point that Paul made is that if there's no one there to interpret what's coming from you, you ought to be quiet. That's it. So when we go to these churches and we see these women saying all this stuff and people falling out and no one is interpreting it, we know that's of the devil. Go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Read that. Read the 33rd verse. 14 and 33. For the Most High is not the author of confusion. Read it again. For the Most High is not the author of confusion. The Most High is not the author of confusion. So when you see these people spitting and falling out and hollering without an interpreter, that is confusion. Because no one in the church is being edified. That's the only thing we're trying to show you. What scripture is that, sister? The Lord says, cry aloud, spare not, show, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. You are not speak, but I'm trying to make you can learn something from me. I've been, I've been saved in this church ten years for a long time, but I'm first of all. You've been saved from what? First of all, well, I've been born to the end. First of all, when you, first of all, the times when you say, when you speak in tongues, if you read your defense, you meant to go, a person might just go to speak in tongues one time in your life. But not, never speak in again. And what did Paul say they got to do with that? Sister, what, what, sister, sis, 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 but, but what do Paul's, sis, we didn't say that people don't get gifts. We're saying there's a rule with that gift. So the rule is, if you don't have an interpreter to edify for the church, it's okay if you got that gift, but go home and talk to God. Don't do that around the church. You're just skipping right over it. You know, you notice how she skipped right over it. Listen, this is what you're skipping over, sis. If there's no interpreter, you're not supposed to do it in public. So, so you understand that? That's the only point we made, so we don't have no problem then. Listen, I did not say tongues of the devil. I said the tongues that are written up in the scriptures are true because they have interpreters. The tongues they're doing in the church without using an interpreter are of the devil. So let me clear it up. As long as, you, listen, as long as there's an interpreter and it's a language we can all understand, it's from the Most High. Sis, we know he wrote the epistle. All these are epistles. Sister, they learn in the church. They know. Sis, we already, we just showed you what Paul said. You, what, you, how can you edify without the scriptures? I'm saying you're not making no sense. This is a, we just read out of the Bible. Okay, it's time for us to go forth because you're still ignoring the scriptures. All right, bless you, sister. That's what's wrong. They get up in these churches, they get demons up in them that overtake them. They be channeling and they be letting in spirits. How do you know it's a demon? It's a demon because they have no control over their person and they don't relate to the scriptures. If anyone is speaking in tongues in the church and they don't have an interpreter, they got a demon in it. There's supposed to be some sort of moderator there. The preacher got to say, all right, Sister Ethel, sit down until we get somebody in here that knows what you're talking about. That's what's supposed to happen. When somebody goes, ah! 
after after doing that, the priest got to be like, okay, ushers, escort her outside, let her go home with that, until we get somebody here to understand what she's talking about. Because we ain't going to have no demon possessions up in our church. Now, unless somebody is speaking that language that she's not... Matter of fact, what you would do is you would stand some brothers and sisters up and say, yo, does anyone know what she's saying? All right, sister, you got three seconds to either wait for an interpreter to come through here so we can understand what you're saying because obviously God is sending you a message. We need to know that message. And if we don't know that message, then that's good. You can speak to God, but go home. If you're going to be in the church, you must be silent so that the church can be edified. You must be silent if no one knows what you're saying. Because you may be demon possessed. With that, we we invite you all to the church. We love you. Come on up. We got one more brother.